You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with India which has been consistently working in the direction of strengthening its diplomacy. Recently, it hosted Made in 2 plus 2 dialogue with the Japanese defense and foreign ministers. Regular meets and an ever-growing trade volume have been the hallmarks of the New Delhi-Tokyo relationship. A report. <music> India and Japan recently held 2 plus 2 defense and foreign minister level dialogue, which is an endorsement of the special strategic partnership between New Delhi and Tokyo. Japan is only the second country after the United States with which India has such a mechanism. Japanese Foreign Minister Toshimitsu Motegi and Defence Minister Taro Kono met their Indian counterparts as Jay Shankar and Rajnath Singh in New Delhi. The 2 plus 2 meeting provided an opportunity for the two sides to review the status and exchange further views on strengthening defence and security cooperation between the two countries and also aimed to give stronger spine to the existing India-Japan special strategic and global partnership. Our dialogue today symbolises the deep level of mutual trust and understanding between our two countries and reflects the synergy that we are witnessing between India's Act East policy and Japan's free and open Indo-Pacific vision. Shinkoku-na, both Japanese leaders met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to further bolster the strategic relations between the two countries. Ties between India and Japan have strengthened as Modi and Abe increasingly share similar opinions in countering growing Chinese assertiveness across Asia. Japanese investment in India has surged in areas ranging from automotives to infrastructure in the remote northeast, making Tokyo its third largest foreign direct investor. The meeting was held in pursuance of the decision taken by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Japanese counterpart Shinzo Abe during the 13th India-Japan Annual Summit held in Japan in October 2018 to institute a foreign and defence ministerial dialogue for further deepening bilateral security and defence cooperation. Moving on. Pakistan Army has been unrelenting in its operations against innocent people, whether it is Sindhis, Pashtuns or Balots. The army has been inhumane in its conduct against the civilians. Barring Punjabis, the unproclaimed elites of Pakistan, almost all ethnicities have endured the barbarities of Pakistani military campaigns. Today we'll tell you about army's ploys and strategies to silence the voices of Baloch people who have been demanding freedom from the clutches of Pakistan for a long period now. A report. Broad daylight abduction of women is becoming a new normal in Balochistan, where the other gender has been targeted indiscriminately over the years. Recently, in a span of just 48 hours, the security agencies of Pakistan picked Nida Bibi, Sakina Bibi, Saeda Bibi and Nazir Bibi from two different locations and dumped them in secluded cells where they were beaten and tortured. The activists from the region say that the abduction of women is the latest ploy being adopted by Pakistan army to muzzle the voices of demand and dissent. This is not the first time that Pakistan army has abducted any Baloch women. This is happening from last few years now. And they are doing this on purpose to stop the campaign of the Baloch national rights 
the campaign of Baloch freedom and to stop the movement which demands the basic rights of Baloch people which is their freedom and the security of their national identity. It is not just about establishing authority or expanding its control, but Pakistan's deep state of army with a backing civilian government has also been tirelessly working on its materialistic agenda. It has been brazenly plundering the resource-rich region for its own needs and luxuries. Any resistance from locals has been stifled with brute high-handedness. Pakistan Army and ISI is trying to blackmail the male family members of these females by abducting them, by torturing them, sometime by uh, raiding their house and misbehaving with the Baloch women. And this is becoming a new norm in Balochistan. Like every single day there are cases that army has raided someone's house, they've misbehaved with a woman or they've abducted someone. The locals, however, have been defiant towards their aim and say they will not give up until they taste independence. Pakistan is increasing the pressure. Baloots have also been exploited politically as various Pakistani parties have sought and gained their support against the promise of fulfilling their six-point demand, though an act, but have abandoned them at subsequent stages. The demands which include the return of all missing persons and the conviction of culpable become a challenge for legislators as army keeps a constant vigil on them as well. This is not only the Pakistan army who is behind all these inhuman crimes against Baloch nation, but the parliamentarians, the people who said that we will talk for the six-point agenda in the parliament, we will bring the missing persons out of the dungeons of the other na so-called nationalist parliamentarians, those who claim to be the genuine representative of Baloch nations in the parliament. They are also involved in all these brutalities by keeping silence or in some cases even informing the army or the military that who and how and which family should be targeted. Baloots have highlighted Pakistani atrocities on several international platforms but have not received a desired response. The international community has been unable to create enough pressure on Islamabad to mend its policies towards Baloots. In such a scenario with no solution in sight, Baloots have no option but to fend for themselves. Moving on. While intimidation and high-handedness are one component of Pakistani tactic of suppressing the youth of illegally occupied Gilgit Baltistan, keeping them deprived of education and jobs is another. In their systematic efforts of keeping a check on youths, intellectual and financial growth, the coalition of civil and military rulers in the country has put a block on the expansion of the educational institutions. And with just one university in the region, educated youths who are unable to take admission are out on the streets against the administration. A report. Carrying placards and shouting pro-freedom slogans, these university students hope that their voices are loud enough to shake Islamabad from its decades-old slumber. Students of Karakoram University in illegally occupied Gilgit Baltistan recently protested against Islamabad, which they accuse of systematically depriving them higher education. 
Students say the repressive administration has framed many of them under trumped up charges, including sedition charges. हमारे नौजवानों के साथ पूरी पाकिस्तान में जो खेल खेला जा रहा है वो खेल ये है कि नौजवानों को आपने नौकर पैदा करना है नौजवानों को आपने बुजदिल पैदा करना है नौजवानों के दिल दिमाग के अंदर से उनकी ताकत खत्म कर दी है मैं अभी कराक्रम इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी से यहाँ इस एहतजाज में शामिल होने के लिए आया हूँ वहाँ से वहाँ ये ड्रामा रचाया गया है नौजवानों के अंदर कि एन एस एफ वो जमात है जो एंटी स्टेट है और हर तालीब इलम के चेहरे के ऊपर एक खौफ था यकीन करें हर एक के होट जले हुए थे वो इस खौफ से कि अगर हम इस एहतजाज में शामिल होंगे तो हमारे साथ क्या होगा इससे बड़ा अफसोस का मकाम क्या हो सकता है एक तरफ से यही कहा जाता है कि नौजवान नस्ल हमारी रीढ़ की हड्डी है लेकिन दूसरी तरफ से उसी रीढ़ की हड्डी को तोड़ने के लिए जा बजा कोशिशें की जा रही है द रीजन ऑफ गिलगित बल्तिस्तान हैज जस्ट वन यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर अ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ मोर देन थ्री मिलियन एंड टू मेक मैटर वर्स इट डज नॉट हैव प्रोफेशनल प्रोग्राम ऑफ स्टडी और द रिक्वायर्ड नंबर ऑफ प्रोफेसर इन सच अरियो द स्टूडेंट्स हु वॉन्ट टू टेक अप इंजीनियरिंग एंड मेडिसिन एज अ करियर are forced to head for pakistani cities where they are either mistreated or not enrolled at all in these courses students blame the administration of turning a blind eye to multiple demonstrations seeking the setting up of more universities and increasing the current number of seats in the university gilgit baltistan taleemi hisab se sabse piche dekha gaya hai to एक ही इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी है उसके अलावा ये है कि इतनी ज्यादा तलबा की तादाद और पढ़ी लिखी यूथ गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में होने के बावजूद हमारे जो नौजवान है वो पिंडी इस्लामाबाद में जाके तालीम हासिल करने के लिए दर वर की ठोकरें खा रहे हैं इन लोगों को यहाँ पे इंजीनियरिंग यूनिवर्सिटी और ये है कि मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटियाँ कायम करनी चाहिए While the number of students eligible to join the university is over 1 lakh its intake capacity is in hundreds despite repeated pleas and demands the administration of the region which largely operates at the commands of Islamabad has been apathetic to the crisis and this state of affairs is not just limited to the education sector the people of Gilgit Baltistan experience discrimination in almost all spheres of their lives whether it is civil liberties quality of life or voting rights the people of the region have been granted almost nothing by pakistan the occupier and self proclaimed protector of the region moving on to nepal where the south asian games 2019 are being played with synergy and enthusiasm the event is being organized in three cities kathmandu pokhara and janakpur around 3000 athletes from the eight south asian countries are competing in this 10 day multi sport event have a look amid thousands of spectators and a ceremony marked with lights and frills the president of nepal Vidya Devi Bhandari declared the 13th South Asian Games Open in the Nepalese capital Kathmandu. Hundreds of participants from South Asian countries held a march past in the event that is being hosted for the third time by the Himalayan nation. The gala event which has now become a basic feature in an event of such stature followed. Stars from different Nepalese industries performed in a bid to take the success of the event a few notches higher. The South Asian Games which will pan around 10 days will be held in three cities of Kathmandu, Pokhara and Janakpur. 
During the 10-day event, 2,700 South Asian athletes will vie for 1,119 medals, including 319 gold. Nepal, which has so far been relatively unsuccessful at leaving a mark in the Olympics, took off at a high note and was a table topper in the first leg of the Games. <laughs> Nepal is hosting the perennial rivalry of India and Pakistan, which got rekindled this time at volleyball court. The Indian team defeated Pakistan 3-1 in the hard-fought match. The match was very tough and uh, we played the uh, uh, first set a little bit uh, uh, normal. We Pakistan uh, uh, this one and uh, we got the 3-1 today. Play, players have played wonderful performance and uh, we are going for the Olympic qualification in the month of January. We will prepare the team and show, I am assuring you that we will qualify for the Olympics also. The female athletes have also rolled the eyeballs of the spectators. The Indian team clinched the gold in this category too. Spectators and the players have all appreciated the arrangements made by the administration in order to conduct the games. The performance wasn't that good as much I expected and because right now only I started training for the Tokyo Olympic 2020. So the thing is that we faced a lot of problems over here. Major problem was the circle was not that good. So we all got medal. That was a proud moment for our nation. We make our nation proud. But the thing is if we'll see about the performance, we may got a better performance so that we can uh, do better in coming uh, trials for the Olympics. Now 2020 is coming and the Olympics are going to be in Tokyo. So the preparations for that are on. I'm training hard. And and uh, I'm putting in hours of training and physical fitness, mental training, because everything is very important to achieve that. With uncertainty lingering and restoration work still lying around, the conduct of the Games in Nepal was uncertain until few months back. However, showing a character and spirit of a true sports person, Nepal is not only hosting the sports extravaganza, but setting the bar high for other nations with the standard it has provided. Now we take you to Konak, a town in India's Odisha state. It is not only known for its monuments, beaches and scenic beauty, but for colourful festivals. A five-day long Konak dance festival was recently held in the backdrop of the Sun Temple. This year, the event coincided with the International Sand Art Festival, which was a delight for the visitors as they got a chance to soak in the aesthetic beauty of the temple fused with various dance forms and admire the sand sculptures made by local and international artists. <laughs> The Sun Temple at Konark is a marvel like no other. The glorious structure, designed as a chariot of the Sun God, drawn by seven exquisitely carved horses, was the venue of the annual festival of classical dance and music, the Konark Dance Festival. This five-day-long dance festival is held to promote Odisha's culture and unique Sen art. Intended to create international cultural brotherhood and amity, the festival lures many artists from the worldwide. Since 1989, the festival is being organized jointly by Odisha Tourism and Odisha Research Center to promote a diverse Indian dance heritage. It is actually every dancer's dream to perform in this prestigious festival that is Sand Art Festival. In front of the Konak Temple, the beautiful background, we were all really very lucky to perform here. The uh, one quite different uh, what you can say, peculiarity of this program is that you have to 
perform pure traditional form. So the dance forms, seven dance forms of India which have long history and now they have come such a long way. Again going back to our traditions and performing the core ethos or the traditional form, we just loved it. The Fiesta witnesses participation of the famous classical dance groups of national and international repute. Odissi, which was the highlight of the show, is considered as a dance of love, joy, intense passion which is pure, divine and human. Performances by the experts of different Indian classical dance forms present the aesthetic and the spiritual essence of the cultural heritage of the country. I am feeling great and honoured because uh, today we, are, we have performed in Konak festival which is Odisha's one of the biggest festivals and most important festivals and uh, live streaming on YouTube mein aur Didi Bharti. Mein. 159 countries throughout the world they watch us perform live and it's a very very big honour for all of us to perform here. The tourists were also delighted to see artists and the sculptures at the 8th International Sen Art Festival at Chandrabhaga Beach. Artists from India and abroad beautifully sculptured the soft golden sands into various magnificent forms. a great way for different cultures to come together and to show what they have learned in their different places and maybe learn from each other and uh, it helps bring the world together and makes it a happier place. More than 100 sand artists participate in the same बहुत सारे international artists different countries से आते हैं जो renowned artists हैं उनके देश से जब भी मैं जाता हूँ out of country में जब भी participate करता हूँ तो उस type का वो भी हमारे देश में इस festival में participate कर रहे हैं The sole aim behind the Konak festival is to bring in many artists into its cultural family and creating international cultural amity and brotherhood. The sand sculptures in the festival fascinate thousands across the country every year. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.